My name's Keith. In this video, I'll be doing some work on an Ultimate Percussion K2X drum module. The client that brought me this drum module also brought me the Simmons unit from a previous video. And just like the Simmons unit, this was manufactured in the UK, so I have to do a power supply conversion from 240 volts to 120 volts. But first, let's look at the front panel. Before I start, I should let you know that I'm presenting the parts of this video out of order. I've actually already done the voltage conversion, but I wanted to show the uh, front panel and the sounds before I did that. So I'm showing this section of the video first, even though I filmed it last. The K2X is meant to be played with piezoelectric drum pads, like you would see on an electronic drum kit. And there are eight individual channels numbered one through eight, and each of them can output a different sound. On the back of the unit, there are two quarter inch jacks, one for a trigger in for each channel, and one for an individual audio out for each channel. Also, across the top, there are individual level and pan controls, these two rows here, and they feed a mixer unit here on the right, and there are individual levels for left and right, and also individual treble and bass uh, EQ settings for the left and the right channels. Uh, above the mixer are the left and right uh, quarter inch outputs, and also a phone or headphone output, and there's an individual uh, level control here for the headphones. Below the mixer and the headphone controls, there's a module called the micro sequencer. Now this isn't a traditional sequencer as you might expect where you can record and playback patterns. Instead, it has six preset patterns that you uh, select uh, with this knob here, and it only drives three of the channels, the last three, and they're nominally known as uh, the low tom, bass drum, and snare. Uh, and just to give you a sneak preview, I'm just going to turn this on right away. So um, we're on pattern one, and you can see the trigger lights for the last three modules being lit up. So that's the uh, low tom, the bass drum, and the snare. And I can switch between the patterns. So there's no way to program these patterns. You just choose patterns one to six. And you can change the speed. And that's about it. There's one other piece of functionality that the micro sequencer gives you, and it's really useful for testing things and setting up sounds. Um, at any time, whether the sequencer is on or off, you can send a constant uh, pulse, either 16th or 8th notes, depending on how you have the speed set up, to any of the modules. And that's what these red buttons here are at the bottom are, so the buttons are labeled pulse. For example, uh, with the sequencer off, I'll uh, push the pulse button on the snare module. And you can see it's just sending uh, uh, regular pulses. So here's the bass drum, the tom, and so on to any of the other, uh, other uh, audio uh, modules or the audio channels. Now let me focus on one channel and I'll go through all the controls in detail. All the channels are exactly the same. Um, the controls and the ranges of each of the controls are the same from channels 1 through 8. There is a preset sound for each of the channels, and those are different, but I'll get into that in a minute. So the three knobs at the top are level and pan. That's for the mixer section. I already talked about that. The next knob down is a sensitivity knob, and that's to set the sensitivity on the input uh, piezoelectric pad. The rest of the controls change the characteristics of the sound, and I'll zoom in on those. So from the top down, the first control is the decay. And let me turn on the uh, automatic pulse so we can hear the sound. So as you could expect, um, this control sets the initial decay of the sound, so the overall envelope for the sound. So it can go from, you know, just momentary all the way to a few seconds. So I'll put it in the middle here. The next control is called Bite, and that adds a percussive uh, chuff to the beginning of the sound. As you turn it up, 
until it's quite pronounced. And then at zero, you can't hear it at all. So I'll kind of turn it up part, part way. The next two controls uh, kind of interact with, with each other. This one here is called noise filter. And this one is a balance between the VCO or the pitched component of the sound and the noise. So that way in this position, it's all only the noise generator. And in this position, it's just the VCO. So I'll kind of turn it in the middle and now I'll play with the noise filter. And you can see it's simply a low pass filter. So you can change the, uh, the characteristic of the noise from like bright to kind of a low sizzling sound. And I'll turn it uh, back so we're hearing mostly the VCO. Uh, the next two controls also uh, interact with each other. This one is VCO pitch and this is VCO sweep. So the pitch is what you would expect. You can go high, and it can go very low. It can go like into subsonics, so you can you can feel it. Well, if you have speakers or headphones, you can kind of sense it, or you can put it into the audio range. Now the VCO sweep is what's causing that kind of uh, the, the the droop in the pitch, and this is interesting because many drum modules only allow a sweep down. And if you go clockwise, you can hear the, the pitch drooping. But if you go counterclockwise, it'll also allow you to have the pitch go up. Now in addition to the pulse button, there's also a mode button. And that will change the settings for the module to either be the live settings on the front panel or a preset. So I push the mode button in. So this is the preset sound. And the first six channels, the presets are uh, a tom sound. So here I'll turn this one off and I'll turn the second channel on. And the mode button is down, so that's the tom. And you can see that the it goes from a high tom to a lower tom, and then as you go across uh, channels uh, three, four, five, and six, the tom sounds get lower and lower. Okay, I've moved things over a bit to show that uh, channel six is the lowest tom. Channel seven has a bass drum sound, and the default for channel eight is the snare. Now one thing I should mention here is that the preset sound only controls the, uh, the parameters here shown with the black with the green lettering. The decay is not saved in the preset. So this is the preset snare sound, but you can change the decay. But all the other sounds uh, have no effect when you've got the, uh, the preset on. Okay, now we'll open things up and I'll go through the 220 volt to 120 volt power supply conversion. Immediately after taking the case off, I noticed something uh, important to one of the tasks at hand. Uh, here, where the power comes in, uh, there's a legend um, in the solder mask here that says 240 volts and an arrow to the left, and 115 volts and an arrow to the right. So this indicates that there's probably some easy way to do a, like a 220 to 110 or 240 to 115 volt conversion. Let me zoom in on this area and we can look at the traces. So here's where it shows 240 volts and the arrow to the left and 115 volts and the arrow to the right. And you can see there's some symmetrical pads, a symmetrical layout of pads. And some of them uh, have some component um, solder to them and that would be the transformer and then some of them look like they've never had anything soldered to them and there seems to be some sort of clever arrangement of traces between the pads. I've seen this type of thing before uh, probably when we flip the board over there will be a transformer with multiple taps on the input and output and these traces will combine them 
uh, either um, like shorting them together or um, chaining them one after the other to allow either 240 or 115 volt operation depending on which set of pads you actually um, solder uh, the taps to. So let me flip the board over and we'll see what's on the other side. Okay, so this is the other side of the board and here is a transformer and just as I suspected uh, on the primary side here it shows 0 to 120, 0 to 120, so those are two 120 volt uh, taps and on the secondary side it says 0 to 12 and 0 to 12. So probably what's happening is when you have it in one position these two taps on the primary side are joined together to make a 240 volt tap and when they're in the other position either one of them won't be used or they'll be uh, wired up in parallel to give a single 120 volt tap and on this side the 212 volt taps are probably um, connected together uh, in the middle to give a bipolar plus and minus 12 volt uh, supply on the output. So now I'll flip the board over again now that we know what the taps are on the transformer and uh, we can look at the traces again. So sure enough um, our guess was correct and this is the output side, the secondary. You can see how the middle um, of the two 12 volt taps are always connected together no matter which um, side, the left or the right, the, the taps are connected to. So this will be the plus and minus 12 volt output. And on this side you'll see in the 240 volt setting, which is the transform on the left, the two center taps here are connected by this trace, which makes a single 240 volt tap. But on the other side it makes, um, it appears to be two 115 volt taps or 120 volt taps. Um, that are in parallel. So that would allow twice the current, but it'll definitely be a 120 volt tap. So that means I should be able to just move this transformer over and that'll be all that's needed to convert between uh, 240 and 115. By the way, the uh, difference in frequency, the 60 verse is uh, a 50 hertz issue, um, actually isn't an issue at all because um, this piece of equipment doesn't get a clock or anything from the uh, the line frequency, the uh, the like the wall, the mains frequency, uh, and that'll all get filtered out anyway in the rectification and the filter stage of the power supply. When I was doing the work moving the transformer from the 220 to the 120 position, I could also tell that there were some other repairs done on the other components in the power supply circuit, specifically the two filter capacitors and the plus and minus 12 volt voltage regulators. Now the filter capacitors were replaced with the right value, uh, but the problem is the package size is wrong and they stick up too high. And also the voltage regulators, instead of being um, mounted flush as far as they can go to the board, they're kind of sticking up a little haphazardly. And the previous, uh, whoever did the previous repair, they had to put this white tape on the back side of the, uh, the front panel because when you put the front panel in place, these components, the voltage regulators and the, the filter caps, uh, they rub on the back of the front panel. So eventually they'll uh, scrape through this um, tape and maybe even the paint and definitely the, the ground lugs and some other metal parts might actually start shorting out. So that could cause problems in the future. So what I did was I bought uh, some new low profile filter caps, the height is uh, lower, so I can mount them much closer to the bottom, to the, the face of the board, than these ones here. And I'm also going to reflow the, um, the solder connections on the two voltage regulators and push them down flush to the board as well. Well, that's it for this video. 
I've attached some Yamaha drum pads to the inputs of a few of the channels. And I'll play along with the sequencer to the end of the video. Thanks for watching.